Hey there, welcome to the Drawing Codex. In this video, what I'm going to do is show you how I would apply some drawing concepts found in the Loomis method to my actual day-to-day -day practice as a comic book artist and a concept artist. So you might have seen some of these exercises, but you kind of wonder, well, how do I actually use that? Well, in this video, I'll explain that and I'll share with you how I actually use these day-to-day -day in my professional life as a working artist. Let's get started. The reason for making this video is just that often what happens is you see the Loomis method being um, sort of talked about and that's where we have uh, a book like this, Drawing the Head and Hands by Andrew Loomis. And what you have is a, a pretty good sort of dissertation on the way that we can kind of break down features and proportions. And again, the thing that Loomis is most known for these days is the idea of Again, blocking things down and creating this nice system for sort of this initial block in of the face, which is quite, if we get it a little bit in focus, it's really, really helpful for rotating the features and just understanding how those forms are created in the beginning. But often when we're actually applying it, things are a little bit different. And um, that's fine. And I've sort of made some videos talking about that. I think one of the, the challenges is that when you start using a system like this, you might imagine that your whole life is going to be sort of measuring these things technically. And what I want to do in this video is just share, you, share with you how I actually sort of tend to use this. Normally, um, when I'm sort of blocking in or I'm doing my sort of pencil pass, the thing with old drawing, that is a double stage drawing, where we kind of block things in or you do a construction phase and then you create your finished lines. And that could either be that we refine it with pencil or you kind of ink it, you know, um, do finished lines and you could either be doing that digitally on a new layer, which is often what I actually do when I'm doing my production professional work, or you could obviously use an actual inking device like a pencil, um, sorry, like a pen or a brush or something. But either way, there's a two-stage step to this. Now, the beauty of that is that essentially, as you begin and as you start your process, you start your learning journey to try and get good at this art thing, you can kind of make your construction process as detailed as you want to the point where basically, when you come to do your finish lines, you're essentially just tracing exactly all of the decisions you made previously at this stage. And... Again, that can seem quite laborious. The thing is that often the way that I'm actually applying it, and maybe one of the things that will inspire you to put time into one of these methods, is that the more experienced you get, the rougher your little construction phase can be. And I also want to talk to the basic idea that often when we're doing stylized art like comic book art, we don't need all of the form-based um, markers in the Loomis method. You kind of get to choose how and why and where and exactly how this thing serves you. And it's really, really important to, to view that not as something from a legacy school environment where you kind of have to read and, and follow the book and, you know, uh, it sort of controls you. It, it, life is not like that, do you know what I mean? High school is like that. School is like that. Art is basically where you get to decide how you create these things. And the Loomis method is merely a tool that will allow you to do that. The, the basic function of the, the tool is that often what we're looking for, if I just sort of put this here, it'll be a little bit more in focus, right? So often what we're looking for when we've got like a little face like this is just where those proportional markers are for like the nose, the mouth and the eyes. And you can see that the problem is that they move in interesting ways depending on where the face is kind of pointed. So it is a challenge. And that is the primary challenge that the initial blocking of the Loomis method really solves. And that is really the most valuable thing if you're going to draw in a stylized manner. Because if we're going to draw in a stylized manner, what we're going to be doing is taking these kind of block-ins and putting some sort of other sort of features over the top. So I'll, I'll do a, a little demonstration after sort of talking about how I create these little proportional markers. But 
again, the point is we have like quite a rough sort of drawing here, but again, what you find is that um, the trick is how do you actually create a more sort of finished drawing over the top of this? And often what we're doing is we're actually just using that initial block in. And you can see my block in is different to the traditional Loomis method because my style um, involves basically sort of compressing the nose and the eyes into a, a sort of a, 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 a sort of narrower little section there. And I'm basically increasing the chin mouth area. And, and that's like a common stylistic route that people will sort of tend to take. But anyway, the point is that often we will just do kind of quite a, a rough block in. And what I'll then do is think about how the specific character that I'm drawing, how their features will be going. And what I'll be adding is just all of those ancillary sort of features. And again, what I'm going to be doing is, is adding them in a, in a pretty sort of stylistic way. So obviously this is, you know, I'm still doing it with pencil, but you know, this is typically how I would actually go about, go about doing it, even if I was, uh, you know, inking it and using finished um, sort of, you know, lines in Photoshop. The idea is that we can take the initial sort of drawing that we've got there. Let's see if I can clean that up, All right, and what I'm doing is, is kind of using the iconic features from, you know, maybe the, the sort of style that, that I have and I'm putting them on there. There's a couple of things here that are sort of really useful and important to pay attention to. One is that the block in is a really good way to get, get pretty close, right? To figure out like what sort of angle I'm going to use and exactly what, um, you know, maybe the, the rough sort of expression. But what you kind of find is that there are more efficient ways to build the features when you're drawing a style um, that are based off um, basically more iconic features. And again, this will change depending on the way that you use the Loomis method, whether you are doing going for something more realistic or, or something more stylized. But again, I've seen people who draw very realistically take a very similar approach. We block things in, and then what you're looking for is kind of where do you start? The most efficient way to start one of these things is from the center where we kind of define this proportion here. The eyes, where they sit, um, I sort of start with the nose, and that allows me to sort of get this proportion pretty accurate. And that actually makes it a lot easier for me to block in some of these other features. So what you'll find is that, again, what I'm doing is, is building a slightly different version to the initial block in that I had. I'm using it as a base, and it gets me most of the way there. It gets me to the point where I know where the character should be, right? I might have a few little feature indications there and you know that really is all I want and again I can sort of you know maybe just play with the the features here now this is just me using iconic shapes so I have the rough indication of like where that sort of head is where the features are going to be it's obviously sort of stretched and, and distorted a little bit and the way that I actually apply this is, is more or less by starting from the, the center of the face and the features, which um, are often the most important thing. And then it's just a matter of, you know, continuing along and using those proportional markers that I, I'm sort of cre creating along the way. So I sort of know that, again, where this sort of hair is going to sort of be in relation to this eyebrow right and, and this sort of brow ridge here so I'm so I put that in you can see that's part of the the construction we've got the construction line here for the cheek that gives me some good indication and again I think this guy was meant to be like a little bit like a pirate right so we'll give him some some sideburns right some stuff like that so Again, you get you get the general idea. What we're doing is we're just doing a you know a non-constructed drawing on top of a rough construction, and 
I found that this is the thing that I actually end up using the most. Now, the challenge is often, you know, I'm a drawing teacher and I've been teaching drawing for a long time. Often there's a big difference between how I think you should learn something and how I'm actually going to apply it because the way I apply it is very personal, it's very specific, right? You would probably, you know, you certainly can, but it's more likely that you'd find some, some different, more unique, personal ways of applying these things. Um, you certainly can do it exactly how I'm doing it. Um, it. It's not like proprietary information. It's just that we think differently, right? We we operate slightly differently, and that's um, you know that's the beauty of it, right? So the point here is that again, I'm I'm creating my sort of finished drawing, but I'm doing it. I'm just sort of winging it, right? I'm making it up. Now, a lot of this, again, is stuff that I'm making up and I'm doing it because I've drawn this type of thing many, many times and I've obviously studied uh, structural drawing and perspective for many, many, many years. So the trick with the Loomis method and the trick with all of these things is that the more you study them, the more you're able to loosely and roughly and more personally apply them. That really is the trick. It's counterintuitive, I know. It doesn't sound like it'll work, but it does work. The way that I actually apply this and I use this day to day is very similar to this. I'll do one of these block ins and then I'm not worrying too much about the block in that I've done. That again is just getting me to the point where now I can do a finished drawing. And the way that I'm going to approach it is is a lot similar to how maybe you started drawing where you know you kind of just start from one place but because i have those proportions blocked in and i know where they are and i've studied the loomis proportional method i kind of know where the hair needs to be in relation to the eye i know where the chin needs to be in relation to the nose etc etc i know where the hairline is i know where the structure is what i need is just an initial plan and that's often how the loomis method is used so let's um, do the full process so you can sort of see it from start to finish, how I would actually sort of apply this. Just quickly, if you're interested in developing your own line and color style, you can check out my free quick start guide. It goes over my process for creating a line and color illustration in Photoshop from start to finish, starting with thumbnails, going all the way to color. And it just gives you some tips on how to develop your own style and work in this technique where we create worlds with a simple line and color. This is the same thing that I do for my comics. You can use it for manga or bon dessiné. I also use the same basic ideas for a lot of the concept art that I do. Super simple, reliable process. Go check it out. It's free. The link will be in the description. What I'm going to do normally if I'm sort of doing my storyboard slash pencils is we're going to do, again, a rough construction. I'm starting with the sphere. I'm adding dimensionality to the sphere. Because I'm not using the realistic proportions, though, I'm just sort of going to make up my own version of this. But the key points here are the sort of symmetry, right? The most important thing here that we need to pay attention to is the and the center line. Right, so the symmetry is just understanding that we want to place the features and we want to get the features. It doesn't matter what style you use, you always want to do this. You want to make sure that the eyes look like they're symmetrically placed, right? We want to make sure that the center line is fairly accurate, right? So that, again, the features are symmetrical across the center line. That really is most of what's sort of happening here. So just by doing a few things, I'm really giving myself all I need. This concept of just the sphere plus dimensionality of the sphere plus the line that sort of defines the center line, that really is in most cases all you need to kind of block in the rest. It's, it's, it's mostly what you need if you're just doing something sort of cartoony. Now, again, if you, if you want more realism, obviously you need to kind of figure out um, a lot more of those bits and pieces but really it is just this center line that we need right and that gives me the dimensionality now the next thing I'm going to do again is just sort of roughly block in the proportions 
And again, this is just based on my sort of knowledge or understanding of the character that I'm sort of creating, right? And then I'm going to place in the nose, right? I'm going to put in that sort of brow ridge. And then um, again, let's try and give this guy a little bit more, right? Sort of expression. So what I'll do is I'll probably normally sketch in a little bit of a, um, uh, you know, like a little uh, expression. And as soon as that's kind of like working, then I'm just like, oh, that, that looks kind of cool. That, that looks sort of interesting. And again, we sort of got the ear and um, it's really important to give yourself a proportional indication of where that hair goes, right? So again, I'm thinking of just drawing like similar guy to, to who I was sort of drawing before, right? Um, so you can see this is rough, but it, it is based on some sort of structure and proportion. So then I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to think about and visualize where that neck is. And you can think, you. this is again where, because I've studied it before, I can sort of visualize a lot of these things, but the neck is kind of coming out here. Right, and depending on how thick the neck is, that's another proportional thing that I would kind of block in, right? But um, again, you know, we can just sort of block it in in a, in, a, in a pretty sort of rough way. Again, proportionally, I know that you know we're going to be sort of one of these proportional markers, um, sort of down from the chin. That's going to be the, the sort of the clavicle, right? That's sort of what I've got, and here, again. This is where, again, most of what you need when you're drawing um, the construction phase is not, again, um, it, the, the more experience you get, it, it, it's not always that you're drawing the thing, it's that you're putting in markers that kind of tell you where the thing is, right? So what I sort of want more um, is, is an indication of kind of where the shirt is, right? Like where it is wrapping around that form. That's kind of more what I want. Right, or I want some of this kind of structure. So imagining again, this guy. Maybe we'll make this guy another sort of pirate, um, sort of character. Give him some pirate features. So again, this is often what what I'm working with as a rough block in, and what I'm after is a number of things. Um, the first is just orientation. Hopefully that's spelt right. Just where is the head in space? Is it like this? Is it like this? Is it like this? Is it slightly up? Is it slightly down? You can see this one feels like it's a little bit like we're sort of looking up at the character, right? That is, you know, one of the most important things there. And I think one of the one of the real keys to, to this is just to understand that often, you know, we're sort of blocking this in, but what I actually need to look at as I sort of transition from this rough point to the next point is just, again, understand where the visualization is happening and then understand how we apply more cartoony features to these slight different orientations of the face. So if you're learning to draw this realistically and you're using the Loomis method to kind of try and create photorealistic characters, the secondary form here is going to be a lot more important. And by secondary form, what I mean is the subtle shape of the nose, the subtle movement of the um, cheekbones. What you would be wanting to, to look at with secondary form is, again, how the lips are moving. With a comic book style, we're relying a lot more on iconography. So what I need to pay attention to is the iconic features. But if you're doing this realistically, again, as I said, I've seen a lot of professional comic book artists do a very, very similar thing. They rough it in and then they kind of just start with some features and then they know that those features are related to this rough block in and then they can kind of find their way through the whole drawing. It's um, again, it's, it's often like a case of um, sort of, uh, you know, do as I do as I say, not as I do. From a drawing teacher perspective, that's not how you should do it, but that is often how it's actually done. So the same thing here, what I need to pay attention to as I'm looking up at the character is less like, oh, all the structure of the eye, right? So you might have seen a, a drawing um, demonstration talking about, you know, how the eye is, is sort of curved and we need to sort of consider the, the curvature of the... Um, 
right? Of, of the eyelashes and the eyelid, and you sort of see this stuff, right? We don't need to do any of that when we're when we're applying this in a more sort of cartoony way. What we need to pay attention to is is more like this, right? This is going to make it look more like we're looking down at the eye, right? And this is going to make it look more like we're looking up at the eye. So all we're sort of doing is we're taking that arm and shape, right? That's where we're looking at the eye straight on, right? And then what we're sort of doing is saying like this is what we're going to look at if we're, if we're looking at the eye um, from below. And this is what we're looking at if we see the eye from above. And this is the iconography. That, yep, sorry, spell it right. I, I always am starting to talk while I'm spelling and then that doesn't work. So again, this stuff is way, way more important. Now, again, I'm not going to go over this because um, it's just a quick little sort of demonstration of how I apply it, hopefully to give you inspiration to maybe jump in and learn it a bit so you can sort of see how it, how it works. But this is the sort of thing we need to pay attention to a lot more. So what I'm dealing with here is the fact that, again, I'm looking at this nose from below. So, again, I'm going to be able to see up into that nostril. And, again, here we've got like a sort of an eyebrow here. And what I'm going to do again is I'm just going to make sure that I, you know, draw that arc of the eye. Right? And I'm just doing it like this, right? It's just that's the style, right? And if there was a thing underneath, it would be like this. But again, there's not really a thing underneath. And if there was, again, it would be closer to that. And again, put in some features like this. Now, this is where, again, I, it's, it's very easy to place these features and put the eyes where you need in relation to each other because I haven't drawn the side of the face. And this is where I really messed up with this in the beginning because I was following it from a realistic standpoint. And what would happen is I'd sort of be trying to block in the face first, right? I'd be sort of blocking in all the major proportions. And then I'd say, well, if I've done that right, then I will have gotten these proportions right. And that's true, but it's actually a lot harder to do that because you need here to often, again, engage in iconography and style. And style doesn't often always fit where it should. You often need to pay attention a little bit more to emotion and character. So here, again, what I'm going to do is just base, again, it's going to be sort of pretty close, but I'm going to base my lines just off kind of this proportion, right? Again, trying to get that sort of proportion happening. So then what I might do is trace that sort of ear, and I'm going to say, well, actually, now that I've drawn those features, that ear is obviously a little bit higher up, right? I, I, I don't need that ear to be quite so low. And again, I can sort of place in the... Um, hair there in relation to this and I can put again we can sort of put whatever um, you know mouth we want in this case I'll just do a similar one All right and then we've got these features so again I'm you can see I'm using massive stylization for the you know, the way that this kind of hair looks, right? Um, I've got a lot of sort of shape design that I'm that I'm working with. The key is that the way that it sort of interacts with the, the face is, is fairly um, form-based and, and structural, right? It's kind of hitting kind of where it needs to be. Um, again, you know, if I'm going to put some sort of wrinkles or, or other sort of features, I can sort of put them in there. And, you know, there you go. That's the, that's the basic idea. That's kind of how we actually apply this to um, the real world, which, again, is not how you should learn it because learning the basic sort of boring one is, you know, really the, the key and, and understanding the details of it will, will kind of help you. But, yeah, don't, don't think that just because you're learning, um, you know, one of these sort of technical models and, um, you know, it, it feels a bit, I guess, sort of artificial or not exactly what you want to do from a stylistic point of view. Just understand that, you know, often 
It's about you understanding how to rotate things in space. That really is the number one most important thing. What you need to take away from the Loomis method if you're into a style is the symmetry aspect, i.e. understanding where the center line is um, and, uh, and understanding how to sort of place features side by side. And really that is just a matter of, you know, applying those same basic things, right? We want to define dimensionality within the sphere. We draw that sort of center line down and, you know, you can think about it just as sort of placing two sort of spheres either side, right? We just want to make sure that um, those are placed symmetrically. So pay attention to those things. Don't worry too much about the secondary form aspects of this. Think more about iconography and how you can apply this to the Loomis method. Now again, the problem I always have when I'm like doing these is that as I'm doing the demo, things get sort of a little bit twisted. So um, you can see that the, the, the form there is like a little bit um, a little bit sort of weird, a little bit sort of twisted to the side. But again, what you'll find is this is allowing me at the very least to create something that has both structure and emotion. And the thing is that what you really have to pay attention to is how to apply the same thing to different features, to different faces. And I'll have another video on that, so check out the channel, see if you can sort of find that, or I'll sort of link it in the description. That's another thing I sort of plan to do. But again, the the real power of this is is not just the idea of taking a, you know, a, a normal kind of face. It's that it, it actually allows you to draw and, and manage your blocking of different types of faces, which really is the power. So again, I might have like a, you know, a weaselly little sort of, you know, pirate sort of character, right? Maybe they've sort of got big ears, right? Maybe they've got like this sort of tiny little sort of snubby nose, right? Again, maybe they've got sort of a brow like this right? Uh, again, you know, they, they have a bit of that sort of simian sort of quality to them, right? Again, I might have a character like that, and this allows me to kind of, you know, put, you know, roughly, roughly put that character in. Uh, I might have another character who is, again, uh, you know, a much, a much broader, more sort of typically heroic character with maybe like a a giant sort of chin, right? Maybe the chin is like too big, you know, it's sort of like too, too ridiculous. But again, you know, maybe in this case, the person has like a long nose, right? And again, this kind of typical mouth, right? Much longer neck. So this really is the power of using one of these things, right? Is that I can quickly say, oh, this is this character, this is that character. And then I can sort of overlay, overlay my iconic understanding of this character um, and sort of draw the features, right? Again, and there'll be a lot of um, subtlety and subjectiveness going on there as I do that, but this really is the power. So again, it's not just like, oh, you gotta rotate the thing, like I could do that myself. It really helps you to think about the structure this way and block it in this way, rotate the, cat, rotate the character this way, keep the major proportions this way. But when you actually come to drawing the features, <laughs> um, in my experience, yeah, there's 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 other ways that we do it that are more linked to an iconography, um, more linked to you just sort of drawing naturally. And in my experience, it's much better to kind of start with that bit in the middle because it's a lot easier to then create and gauge proportion from there. And you never get to a phase where you've kind of blocked in the face and then you've got to sort of fit an eye in there. That's where I found like a lot of sort of trouble generally combining a structural system with a more sort of cartoony look. Anyway, that's all. That's it. That's all I've got for this one. Hopefully this has been interesting. Let me know in the comments if you have gotten some value out of this, whether you've tried using the Loomis method for comics or manga or anything similar, whether you'd like me to make any other videos talking about similar things. But other than that, that's all I've got. Catch you around. Happy drawing.